Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, my name is Andrea. I love to film videos about cruelty-free beauty, specifically drugstore and affordable makeup. I like high-end makeup, but I get so excited about new drugstore products. And what I love about the beginning of the year is that typically a lot of brands release new collections, a lot of drugstore brands. So I plan on doing, well, okay, let me start from the beginning. I ordered a bunch of new drugstore makeup and I'm planning on doing some reviews, some testing new makeup. And then of course, in a few weeks, I'll come back and share my final thoughts on everything Thing and let you guys know which products I think are worth the money, which ones aren't. But first, I thought I would share all of the new products with you guys in today's video. Do some close-up shots, some swatches. I feel like it can be hard to shop for makeup these days. First of all, the stores don't usually carry the newest drugstore releases for a while. And second of all, if they do, you can't really swatch them or see what they're like. So that's why I like to film these videos and give you guys an idea of what the products look like, if they're pigmented, if they're sheer. And then, of course, I'll test the products on camera in the next week or two. And then a few weeks later, I'll share my final thoughts and let you guys know which products really are worth the money, which ones aren't. So I placed an order on the Milani website because they actually have a really beautiful new collection that I think is so much fun for the spring season. And I've been wanting to try a new Milani eyeshadow palette for a while just because I've heard really good things about their palettes in general. So I picked up the Milani Gilded Flora palette. So I do have this on my eyes today. I did a little bit more of like a pinky neutral look, but I am going to use this in an upcoming video and really use like those brighter purples, those deeper pinks so we can see how those perform. So I did try one of their palettes last year. It was one of their all-inclusive face and eye palettes, which I did like, but I would describe Milani's eyeshadow formula as like a very thin, lightweight formula. It's definitely buildable. It's really soft, pretty powdery, but it does blend out nicely. When I think of a brand like Natasha Denona, I find that her shadows are a little bit heavier, a little more creamy, and I would almost say Milani is the opposite. But if you're someone who likes a buildable shadow, I think you'll enjoy this formula. The shimmers are also really beautiful. I'll swatch the entire palette for you so you can see what it looks like, but I just thought the color story was so much fun for the spring season. So I'm excited to keep testing it out. I'll use it in an upcoming video that should be up within like the next few days so you can see how it actually applies and performs, but this look was created just using this palette. So last year I was all about lip oils and I feel like it will probably be similar in 2022 as well. So Milani released the Fruit Fetish Lip Oils. I was so excited about these. I only got one, but I think I might pick up a second one because I was having a hard time I'm deciding which one to grab. I got 120 Strawberry Melon. This smells so good. And as soon as I put this on my lips, I could tell that it just felt like a thick, luxurious lip oil. For the most part, lip oils feel very similar, but some are thinner, some are a little bit thicker. This one felt so thick and hydrating, and it felt hydrating for a few hours. Also, this one has a little bit more pigment compared to other lip oils that I've tried, and it almost left a little bit of a stain behind, just something so subtle. So I thought this was such a nice product. I know this isn't like a full review, but so far so good. I definitely want to pick up another one of these because this could become an absolute staple for me. I got a few other products from Milani. They released this Flora Tinted Lip Balm. I have tried these lip balms in the past. They feel really nice on the lips. In the past when I've tried them, I think they've had a good amount of pigment to them, so I just thought this would be like a fun pop of color for the spring season. Last year, I tried the Milani Matte Lipsticks, which I believe were a new release, and they were really nice. I think they kind of went viral on TikTok, so it looks like they've experienced of the line. Last year they just did like a bunch of nude shades and then for their spring collection they added in a bunch of really bold shades. I kind of want to get back into wearing bold lipstick. I miss it. I kind of used it a little bit more during the fall season and every time I apply like a really bold color it just boosts my mood instantly. So I did pick up two brighter shades. I got the shade Blossom which is a bright intense pink. I think this will pair so nicely with the eyeshadow palette especially those purple pinky shades. And then I also got the shade Dahlia which is a super intense deeper plum. So I'm going to try these out. I'll let you guys know what I think. I really liked the nude shades that I tried from the line. So I'll see if it is a similar experience with some brighter shades as well. I did grab two of these shadow sticks from their new collection. So I kind of got into cream shadows a little bit more last year. I mean, cream products in general. But what I like about these shadow sticks is you can use them on the eyes as eyeshadows. You can use them as a base or an eyeliner. Typically, I like to smudge something like this on my lower lash line, and they had really pretty colors to choose from. Shades that looked like they would coordinate really well with the eyeshadow palette, and then just shades I thought I would use on their own as well. So I got like a lighter pinky one and then a deeper purple one as well. So I can't wait to try these out. They released these when they did like that they had that palette, what was it? Was it like a car or a van or am I making that up? I feel like they had like some sort of 
large palette that was like a travel collection. And at the time they did do shadow sticks and I was curious about them. So I decided to finally grab them and try them out and see if they were worth using. So I'll keep you guys posted on these. And then I also picked up their two new cheek palettes. So last year I had really good luck with the Milani cream blushes. I thought they were so good, pretty much as good as like any high-end cream cheek product I tried. So they actually released a cheek kiss cream blush palette. So I wanted to try it out and see if the formula was the same as like the individual cheek kiss cream blushes. And then I could let you guys know in an upcoming video, but I thought this was such a beautiful palette. These are blushes or these blushes are a little bit deeper than what I would typically wear. But what's nice about this formula is you can sheer it out or you can build it up to be really intense as well. And I liked how it just had three different options. The only thing I will say about this palette, this is super cheap packaging. That's the case sometimes when it comes to the drugstore. Although sometimes you get really Really nice packaging at the drugstore. This is like a little plastic insert, which I feel like could be good for traveling if you're doing any traveling anytime soon or at some point in 2022, because this isn't really going to shatter in your makeup bag, but it also doesn't feel like luxurious luxurious or high-end, if that's something that you care about. I just wanted to throw it out there. And then they also did a Cheek Kiss Powder Blush Palette. I just thought, again, this was a really pretty palette. These are shades, at least like these two shades, are shades that I would typically wear. And then this is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I just thought it was pretty and I would grab it and test it out and let you guys know if it is worth picking up. The last thing from Milani that I did grab is a new mascara. So for the past few months, I've just been using the Essence slash Princess Curl and Volume. That has been my go-to. I love it so much. So I kind of wanted to branch out and try a few new mascaras. I love drugstore mascaras. So this one is the Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara. It's supposed to be long wear, smudge proof, clump proof, and 93% saw extreme volume and instant lift which does sound like my kind of mascara. I tried their highly rated mascara. I think that's what it was called, but the wand was different. So this one is different. Speaking of new mascara, e.l.f. also released a new mascara. I actually had really good luck with their two mascara releases from 2021. Before that, their mascaras rarely worked for me, but they did Lash It Loud, which is really nice if you like a lot of length and you like separation. And then they also did Big Mood, which I think is nice if you like volume and drama. So they just released this one. It is the Lash Beads Defining and Lengthening Mascara. The bristles kind of look similar to Lash It Loud, but Lash It Loud is like a... It's like a thin one, but it's like rounded, and this one is more tapered. So I feel like this would be really nice for like the outer corners, the inner corners, or even the lower lashes. It says, don't want the full beat, but still want to stand out. This is the right amount. It helps to make, oh, it has fibers in it to make your lashes look longer. And then the narrow wand has tight bristles that define and separate. So this sounds like it could be a good one. I don't think it's going to be as dramatic or voluminous as Big Mood, which is what I typically like. But we'll see. I just thought I would try it out and let you guys know if it is as good as the other two that they released last year. I've actually had a few new releases that I was so excited to try. So I did grab the Power Grip Primer. This is the reason why I initially placed the order because when they announced this product, it sounded really nice. It sounds like it could be a good dupe for the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip, which I thought was interesting because they already have the Mint Melt Primer and then they also have the Jelly Pop Primer. So I wasn't sure why they did release this one too. I think I read online that this one is actually fragrance free. I'll have to double check that because if that's the case, that would be nice. The Jelly Pop one smells very strongly of watermelon and the Mint Melt one has a very mint scent. So I will try it and let you guys know if it's as good as the other two. I love the other two. I actually, where is it? I repurchased the Jelly Pop Dew Primer when I was placing my order because I just used mine up. It's such a good option if you like a primer that locks your makeup into place. It works so well. It's really been my go-to for the past few months. Elf also did these Love Triangle Lip Filler Liners. They look like mini liners. I thought they were going to be like full-size liners just based on the photo but I kind of like that they're minis. I don't typically go through full-size liners very often. I loved the lip liners that e.l.f. did when they did the Retro Paradise collection. I still use those all the time. They're just like traditional wooden pencil liners, but I'm curious to know how this formula compares to that. Now these do have a triangular shape, which I think is interesting. I don't know if I'll find that more helpful or less helpful than like a regular traditional lip liner. It says use the tip of the unique triangular shape to line your lips or use the full triangle to fill in the rest of your lips. Okay, so I do feel like it would probably be a little bit easier to fully fill in your lips because it is a little bit bigger. These, they feel nice initially. They definitely have like a matte finish to them. I'm just really curious to know if they do compare to the pencil liners they've done in the past. 
This will actually pair so nicely with the Fenty Gloss and Hot Chocolate, which is what I love to wear day to day. So I hope these work out well. They feel nice so far. And then I did pick up two of their new glossy lip stains. So I've tried products like this in the past from different brands. The first brand that I think of is Urban Decay. Remember when they did like their lip chemistries and they were basically glossy lip stains. They went on glossy and then once the gloss wore off, you were left with a stain, but they were supposed to adjust based on your personal pH. So on me, they all ended up looking just like pink, very pink, no matter what I went in with. I think that these are similar in that they go on like a gloss and then they stain your lips, but I don't think these adjust. So that's why I'm hoping these will work better. Let's swatch them. So the first shade is Basic Beige. This will actually go really perfectly with the lip liner that I chose. And it's just like an everyday light pinky nude. I also wanted to get a deeper color too. This one is Berry Queen. And this one, yeah, this is so gorgeous. I feel like I am just so drawn to this color in particular lately. These have like a little bit of a cooling feel to them. They have a nice sheen, but it's nothing too over the top. So let me just kind of wipe away that glossy layer and see what the stain underneath looks like. Okay, you do get a little bit of a stain, but they still kind of look glossy. So these feel like they could be really promising. So e.l.f. did release two new bite-sized eyeshadow palettes, which I wanted to grab just because I really enjoy these. They're so good for quick and easy looks. So the first one is Orange Dreamsicle. This is a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. It might have been this light online, but I swear the initial release photo I saw looked a lot more intense. I would say if you're looking for a really dramatic orange shadow, this probably isn't going to be the quad for you. You're really going to get like a super soft look using it. So I'll try it out and let you guys know what I think. But I, I mean, you can tell it's pretty soft. Again, I'll swatch it so you'll be able to tell from the swatches a little bit better. And then I also got this one. This one is I Love You A Latte. I think this one comes with four matte shadows. Yes, this is so perfect. I need a shadow like this to set my eyeshadow primer into place. And then sometimes whatever palette I'm using doesn't have what I would typically use as a transition color. So this will be absolutely perfect. And then I've kind of been enjoying like a dark brown as an eyeliner rather than going in with liquid liner. So I think I'll be able to get Again, a good amount of use out of this. I really like this matte formula just because it is so blendable and so smooth. So I just feel like this will be really nice to have. These aren't brand new. Elf did these little lip balms a while ago. I just hadn't placed an order on their website. So I added this one on. It's just a tiny little cute lip balm. This one is coconut. These have like a very, very sheer wash of color. They're not going to look too intense on the lips by any means, but I just thought I would try it out and see what the formula is like. And then they did just release these daily dew sticks. So I wanted to grab it so I could review it on my channel. It's basically a highlighter in a stick. They actually had a few colors to choose from. And I purchased this one based on the swatches I saw. Yeah, I think this color will be good for me. It's just like a very pretty pearly sheen. I wouldn't say it has any pinkiness to it. Any pinkiness you see is left from like those lip stains earlier. But it definitely has like a slight cooling texture. Elf did a... Um, what is it called? Cream highlighter stick with their Jelly Pop collection that they re-released this past summer. And I really enjoyed it. I don't typically love cream highlighters, but that one was so nice. So I wanted to try this one out and see if it was nice. It looks pretty. I kind of rubbed it in. I feel like it looks the best when you just apply it and leave it rather than like rubbing it in. But again, I'll try it and keep you posted on what I think. And then these are not new. I just purchased them because I was placing an order. I love the Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. I actually ran out of mine and I was using micellar water. And I do like micellar water, but I typically prefer that in the summertime during the fall and the winter and even heading into the spring. I do love more of an intense makeup removing balm these days. And this one is my favorite. It's super affordable. I actually replaced like all of the high end and makeup balms that I've tried with this one. I recently tried It Cosmetics again, Drunk Elephant. They're good, but this one really is so much better and it's really affordable. So I do recommend this. And then I also picked up the Holy Hydration Hydrogel Moisturizer. But this one is so perfect if you have oily skin because it's a super lightweight moisturizer that feels really hydrating on the skin, but it sinks in. It just, it doesn't leave your skin with like this heavy or greasy feel. It's not sticky. It really is so perfect for everyday wear. So I love this. 
A few more products that you can expect to see in some upcoming review videos, the NYX Plump Right Back Plumping Serum and Primer. This was kind of expensive for a drugstore product. I feel like NYX does charge a little bit more, especially for their complexion products, but I do feel like NYX has had like their, I don't know if it was their best year, but I feel like TikTok has really hyped up a lot of NYX products lately. So I feel like maybe they're feeling like they can charge a little bit more. But anyway, I'll let you guys know if it's worth the price tag. It's supposed to leave your skin feeling and looking plump. You can use it alone or with foundation. I love trying new primers. This one sounds nice. I do deal with texture and fine lines. There's only so much a primer can do, but we'll see. CoverGirl had two new products I wanted to try out. So again, like I said, I wanted to try a few new mascaras. I really like the Exhibitionist mascara, and then they have another one. This one is the Exhibitionist Stretch and Strengthen mascara. So it has a lash strengthening formula that's supposed to protect against breakage. I feel like that will be hard to know if that's actually the truth or not, but it says that it allows you to reach every lash from root to tip for longer, thicker, more defined lashes. And then they also have the Lash Enhancing Liquid Liner. This is a flexible felt tip liquid liner pen that glides on smoothly and stays in place. I'm always on the hunt for a good drugstore liner right now. I'm using the NYX Epic Ink Liner, which is really nice. Okay, so speaking of NYX, they have a few new products as well. Well, I just showed you their face primer, but they also have this Epic Smoke Liner. It's an angled liner, and then it comes with a little brush on the end, so you can apply it and then smudge it out, which sounded really nice. So I got the shade Nude Haze, which is kind of like a cooler toned brown. And then they also had a new brow product. This sounds really nice. I'm so curious about this. This is the Thick It, Stick It Thickening Brow Mascara. It's a vegan formula with hair-like fibers and I have the shade Espresso. I love NYX brow products. I love their micro brow pencil. Their Lift and Snatch brow tin pen is one of my favorites. So I would love to find a brow gel from the brand that I love too so I can have like a complete NYX brow routine. Their products are affordable. They have a good shade selection. So I'm curious about this. I did try their brow gel that went viral last year, but it was like a little bit too sticky for me. So I don't know if this one is going to be too sticky as well. I don't think so because it says that it has hair like fibers. So I think it will probably be more similar to the e.l.f. Wow Brow Gel. At least I hope so. And then I just picked up the NYX This Is Juice Gloss. I got Passion Fruit Snatch. They did have a couple of them. So this doesn't have any color to it. They had a few different colors, but the color definitely is just like the actual tube. This is a true clear gloss. It smells really good. I can't tell if it's sticky. I don't think it is. This is electrolyte infused color. So what does that mean? Maybe once it's on the lips, it shows up with a color. Let me Google it. I'm on their website and there are eight different options. So it does look like they have a very, very subtle hint of color. So if you look at the actual models, you can tell that they're slightly different. I did pick up just a couple of the LA Girl Shockwave Nude Lip Liners. These are so pretty, but it's hard to choose online because the actual swatches, or no, the actual colors look very, very dark. So I wasn't sure what they were going to look like. This is the color that I'm excited about, Maple Glaze. This is like a medium toned brown nude. I do have Sandstorm and Coquette, and those are really beautiful too. These are a little bit darker. So this one is Mauve, which is a really pretty pink. This would look so pretty with the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. And then this one is Rosewood. So this one's pretty dark. This one's like a plummy brown. This will go really well with the Milani lipstick I picked up. And then I did grab one of their neon lip liners. I thought I got a red just based on the online photos, but this is like a true hot pink. This is so pretty. This is the color Fiery. You guys, the LA Girl lip liners are so good. They feel like high-end lip liners, but they're only a few dollars. And I think I got these for like 40% off. Either that or buy one, get one 40% off. I can't remember. I just know there was a deal and I've been wanting to get them. So I just added a few more to my cart. The last thing I picked up is the JCap Beauty Aqua Assurance Compact Foundation. This has been in my loves list or whatever the equivalent is on the Ulta Beauty website for the longest time. So I got the shade Ivory. I believe it's a powder foundation. I've really been into powder foundation lately. I've kind of been going back and forth between the Urban Decay one and then also the Fenty Beauty one. So this one, okay, I just wanna see what the pigment is like. I have a swatch on my hand that kind of left a stain. So let me just see if this covers it. Oh, wow, this has good pigmentation. It's also really smooth, very, very silky. You can kind of see it a little bit, but I feel like with powder foundation, I don't always wanna cover like 
my entire face. I just want something that's going to even out the redness. So I cannot wait to try this out. I've heard so, so many good things about it and I've just been loving powder foundation lately. So this isn't new, it's just something I decided to pick up. So I'll definitely let you guys know what I think. So those are all of the new products I decided to pick up. I just thought it would be fun to show you guys. I'll do some close-up shots, some swatches, share the price info, everything that you'll need. And I will keep you guys posted in some upcoming videos. I want to do at least two videos where I test new makeup because I do have a good amount of products in here. And then I'll incorporate some of my other favorite drugstore products. And then I will come back in a few weeks and do the best and the worst and share my final thoughts on everything. But I just thought it'd be fun to do like a... What, what am I trying to say a swatch and tell like a show and tell with the new products and just share some initial impressions so thank you guys so much for watching today's video I really appreciate it I hope 2021 is going really well for you so far and I'll see you guys very soon with a new video bye